Thousands of migrants have died trying to reach Europe by crossing the Mediterranean from Libya. Many thousands more have been saved from certain death by NGO search and rescue vessels. So why do EU countries want to stop those ships from giving aid that's rooted in maritime law when the alternative is a Libyan Coast Guard with a record of arresting or shooting at those it's supposed to be helping? We've been to sea to find out. Migration, and how to best respond to it and control it, has become one of Europe's most complex and hotly debated problems. The arguments have been loudest around the central Mediterranean and the dangerous waters between Libya and Italy, which many thousands of migrants have crossed with the help of people smugglers. For the last five years, EU navies have maintained a presence to discourage people from making the journey. The Libyan Coast Guard has also stepped up patrols with the backing of an anti-migrant government in Italy. They've become more active in trying to stem the human tide. Both the EU and Libyan authorities insist their actions save lives. But their methods, focused mainly on deterrence, are at odds with those of other groups operating in the area since 2014. NGOs whose only aim is to aid migrants in peril at sea. The differences came to a head this year, when the Libyan Coast Guard clashed with rescue vessels from two of the NGOs, Proactiva Open Arms and SOS Mediterrane. With access to both sides, we've been to examine the implications for humanitarian operations in the area. إنكم تتعاملون مع المغربين مع تشجيع الهجرة الغير شرعية نحن موجودين لحماية سواحلنا كحر السواحل نحن موجودون في نفس المنطقة وكانت القا وكان القارب على بعد أميال من حرس السواحل أنتم شجعتم القارب لركوب أكوايروس دون حرس السواحل. Colonel Bajela has been a Coast Guard since 2012. He trained in Russia and then had a successful career in the Libyan Navy. Now he is greatly feared by people smugglers. لابد من الجلوس مع حرس السواحل ومناقشة الأمر. ففي البداية اشتغلت الانجيو هذه على مسافة 12 ميل و 13 ميل وبعدين استطعنا أن نبعدهم حتى 35 ميل. ولكن طالما الانجيو موجودة فالهجرة مستمرة. After the revolution in 2011, Libya became a favored departure point for Europe-bound migrants. The numbers steadily rose until reaching a peak between 2015 and 2017. This year, although many thousands have attempted the crossing, the human tide between Libya and Italy has begun to recede. We tracked down a middleman to people traffickers who agreed to speak to us anonymously. He told us the decline is because the journey has become much more difficult. Actually, with the way things are now, it's on the decline. Because day by day, I listen to news, the conclusions of the European Union, and whatever they are doing, blah, 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 blah. So by these people are scared now. So the, there are reductions compared to 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, mostly 2015, 16. Now it is really the already. It takes time, money, and energy, and probably takes life. We met up with Oscar Camps, the founder of a Spanish NGO, Proactiva Open Arms. He has had direct experience of the Libyan Coast Guard's increasingly hostile approach to NGO operations. He says the relationship began to turn sour in 2017. Europa 
financia, arma y entrena a un grupo armado libio que los hacen llamar guardacostas y nos los lanzó para amedrentarnos por lo militar, los tuvimos delante, nos dispararon, pasamos de tomar té en el 2016 con ellos a de golpe recibir disparos, amenazas y un secuestro. ¿no? One incident happened on the 7th of August 2017. A Libyan Coast Guard patrol boat number 654 fired warning shots at the Golfo Azuro, a rescue vessel being leased by Proactiva Open Arms. The NGO told us that the ship was at least 12 nautical miles away from the Libyan coast and thus outside its territorial waters. Nevertheless, 10 days later, there was another incident involving the same vessel. The Golfo Azuro was again stopped at sea and this time ordered to accompany the Libyan Coast Guard into Tripoli Harbor on suspicion of operating within Libyan territory. As a result of this much publicized incident, the owner of the Golfo Azuro refused to continue renting it to proactive open arms. The NGO had to find a new vessel to continue its operations. Nos secuestraron durante unas horas y nos querían llevar a Trípoli, justo en medio de toda esta campaña de descrédito. Me imagino que para, para mostrar a, a la sociedad, al pueblo, de que había descontrol, de que las ONGs entraban y salían eh, sin respetar el derecho internacional, sin respetar la soberanía de un país que está en guerra, eh, falso, porque jamás entramos en aguas territoriales. Eso les dio a pie a seguir con su campaña Aparentemente había un caos en el Mediterráneo y que había hacer un código de conducta para ordenar un caos. That month, August 2017, Italy asked all NGOs to sign a code of conduct, which put strict limits on their ability to carry out rescue missions. It had a significant effect. By the beginning of 2018, only four NGOs were left operating vessels in the Mediterranean. Italy's determination to limit the activities of NGOs is based on the belief that their presence encourages migrants to make journeys they would otherwise avoid, or even, in the words of Italy's controversial new interior minister, Matteo Salvini, that they act as a taxi service. Matters came to a head in June 2018, when Italy refused to let the Aquarius, a rescue ship carrying over 600 migrants, disembark them in Italian ports. When Malta also refused to accept them, it became a Europe-wide dispute. Eventually, the migrants were offloaded in Spain. This left the Libyan Coast Guard as almost the only rescue option in the area, which they welcomed nevertheless. Come on, come on, come on. The last decision, and the last decision from the Italian government, was to stop the Mawani. This decision had a very important role in the end of the war, and we في في انقاص عدد المهاجرين لأنها كانت دائما وابدا كانت وجهتهم إلى إيطاليا. But journalist Fabrizio Gatti says relying only on naval and coast guard vessels will not solve the problem. He has followed this issue since investigating an infamous tragedy in 2013, when around 270 migrants died near Lampedusa Island. On that occasion, an Italian Navy ship kept out of rescue efforts until it was too late. Had there been NGO vessels in the Mediterranean at the time, the disaster might have been averted. The so-called civil society in Europe decided that they had to do something against this massacre. And that is the reason why different organizations decide to go at sea to rescue people and to do what the law obliged to do and what the government, European rich government, were not doing anymore. So the pull factor exists because the presence of ships, of navy ships at sea, made more people feeling safer and more people try to cross the sea. But is the result of the fact that European government refused to go to the route of migration. Now, the journey for those who do make the trip is becoming even more perilous. According to the International Organization of Migration, September 2018 had the highest rate of dead or missing at sea since 2016. NGOs say that this is because they are now being discouraged from operating in the area. 
A migrant vessel leaving from Libyan shores today has little chance of being rescued if it gets into difficulties. From the Libyan side, the military coast guards say that they are doing their maximum to cooperate with Europe in the search and rescue operations. But they insist that having NGO vessels operating off their coast restricts their ability to properly do their jobs, including targeting migrant traffickers. Colonel Masoud Abdel Samad is from the Coast Guard Operations Center in Tripoli, where incoming distress calls are handled. He told us of his unit's involvement in Operation Sophia, a joint project with the EU to identify and capture vessels being used by migrant smugglers, thus disrupting their business model. After the 2011 revolution in Libya, 90% of its navy was destroyed. In 2013, the authorities in Tripoli sent the few boats they had left to Italy for repair. Because of continued instability in Libya, the vessels weren't returned until March 2017, the four patrol boats the Coast Guard are now using for rescue operations. With the return of its patrol boats, the Libyan Coast Guards became more involved in rescue operations. But this also brought them into confrontation with the NGOs. One of the most recent clashes came in March 2018, involving a vessel operated by Proactiva Open Arms. A team of journalists from a Catalan newspaper, Diari Ara, were on board at the time. The incident began when the Maritime Rescue Coordination Center in Rome passed on the location of a sinking vessel to both the Libyans and the Spanish NGO. Local command of the operation was given to the Coast Guards, but fast inflatable rubber boats from Open Arms got to the scene first. They quickly began a rescue mission, but then the Libyan patrol arrived and matters got out of hand. Uh, I understand that my my reach is coming to me. I understand, okay. But when the open arms boats began to comply, the rest of the migrants in the sinking dinghy started jumping into the water to avoid being rescued by the Libyan coast guards, who would return them to Tripoli. <laughs> Libyan Coast Guard, Libyan Coast Guard, uh, you don't rescue the people if uh, the people going to the sea. Uh, want, do you want collaboration about uh, this situation? We showed Colonel Bugella the footage and asked him about the death threats issued by one of the boats under his command. صراحة الوضع المر المشهد هذا لم لم نشاهده سابقا ولكن حدث معي عديد المرات ولكن مش بالطريقة هذه ولكن فحواها كانت نحن نقول لك حاجة نحن جهاز حرس السواحل زي ما حكيت لك عندنا البحث والإنقاذ عمليات الإنقاذ هذا جزء صغير جدا من مهام حرس السواحل مهام حرس السواحل هي تنفيد وحماية المياه الليبية والإقليمية فبعض المهام كما أخبرتك وهو ليس سر هو تطبيق والقبض على مجرمين هاربين من طائلة القانون عبر البحر 
Later, Colonel Bujala told us he regretted that threats had been made against the open arms vessel, but said that the NGOs do not have access to the intelligence information available to the Coast Guard. He said the sinking dinghy contained people the authorities needed to question. The incident had serious consequences for the NGO. The Coast Guard left the scene and open arms were allowed to take all the migrants on board. The authorities in Rome then directed the vessel to a port in Sicily, where the rescued people could be disembarked. But when they arrived, the ship was seized and the captain and the head of mission accused of people trafficking, risking a 15-year prison term. In late September 2018, we witnessed another confrontation, this time from the Libyan perspective. We were with a Coast Guard patrol when a migrant boat in jeopardy was found by Aquarius II, currently one of the few NGO vessels operating in the central Mediterranean. Colonel Bujela, the commander of the Coast Guard patrol, asked the NGO vessel to withdraw to five nautical miles from the target. When the NGO vessel did not follow the orders, the colonel reacted. Quiet, quiet. This is a good morning. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sir, good morning. Do you, did you visit Tripoli? Uh, yes, affirmative, sir. Uh, we spoke to uh, Colonel Van Soden. I said, do you, did you visit? He said, did you, do you have been in Tripoli town? Uh, Medicine Sofatil, Doctors Without Borders, has been to Tripoli, yes, sir. How, uh, what did you think if you were going to Tripoli now? To visit it, to stay there one week or two weeks, it does. Uh, sorry, sir, I do not understand your uh, message, sir. So we're currently... I give you an invitation to visit Tripoli town now. If you can change your course to the Tripoli. نحن لما نبنهدد ل نحن في الأخير رجال ضباط قوات بحرية لما نهدد نفعل لو كان بنيتنا اقتيادهم إلى طرابلس نستطيع المرة القادمة اقتيادهم إلى طرابلس يقترف خطأ في حق حرس السواحل بإمكاننا اقتيادهم بدون التهديد ولكن كانت عزومتنا إلى طرابلس هي عزومة لإثبات أن طرابلس آمنة أكوارس 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 طلبنا منكم مغادرة المنطقة لتسهيل عمل حرس السواحل ولعدم وضع المهاجرين في وضع مفاضلة ما بيننا وبينكم المهاجر سيطلب الاتجاه إلى أوروبا وأنتم تشجعونه على ذلك طلبنا منكم الابتعاد مسافة خمسة ميل حتى لا يتم تشجيع المهاجر للركوب إليكم ويبقى باستطاعتنا التعامل معه ولكن كالعادة أنتم تستغلون ظاهرة الهجرة لأغراض لا عنها وأطلال على القارب بتاعنا هل من الممكن أننا ناخد على قاريوس هل من الممكن الوضع الغير صحيح أنتم اختلفتموه الوضع الغير صحيح التي تحكي عليه أنتم من وضع القارب في هذه الحالة وعليكم أن تتحملوا المسؤولية وضعية زي هذه ما عادش نقدر سفينة كويرس لم تضع أي لنا أي حل في حال تم إنقاذ المهاجرين وإركابهم من قبل حرس السواحل بالتأكيد سيتم قفز المهاجرين إلى الماء والرغبة إلى الصعود على قارب كويرس التي تشجعهم للذهاب إلى أوروبا لا لا نريد أن نخاطر بحياة المهاجرين تشاهده لا يشكل أي خطر الزورق مبحر كان بإمكانه يستمر في البحار 
الى ان يتم انقاذه من قبل حرس السواحل الليبي المتواجدون في المنطقه، ولكن نحن كنا على مسافه اربعه ميل من سفينه اكوايروس منذ الساعه الثانيه صباحا وعلى اتصال مباشر معهم كانوا يوجهون في القارب عبر التريا لابعاده عن حرس السواحل الان لا نستطيع فعل اي شيء سنعطي اوامرنا لاكوايروس 2 بنقل المهاجرين The Libyan Coast Guards asked the Aquarius II to leave the area, but then another rubber boat with around 100 migrants on board was spotted by an Italian military plane. It was sinking. The plane dropped inflatable life rafts to keep the boat afloat and passed the location to both the Libyans and Aquarius II. This time, the Coast Guards got there first. The migrants would be taken back to Libya. NGOs say that returning migrants to Libya exposes them to huge risks of rape, torture and slavery. Our anonymous people trafficker agreed. It's not possible for me to work for zeal. I work for something. Money is everything. And anybody can do anything for money. When we had agreements and you came, and you are not fulfilling my agreement, I gotta go to any length. Because I need my money. I need my comfort. By this, maybe they, they might be enslaved, they might be imprisoned, they will go through torture, they will go through sellings, and things like that. What is human trafficking? It's moving from one place to the other for a better life. The Americans did that first. They enslaved our forefathers. And today we want to go there ourselves. They are denying us our right. It's not to be done. The Coast Guards told us that they had been surprised to find many Libyans aboard the boat they rescued in late September. But perhaps they should not have been. An outbreak of fighting that month between rival militias and Tripoli meant the country was becoming ever more dangerous. With it also becoming more difficult to make the crossing to Europe, people were trying to get out while they still had a chance. Of those the Coast Guards took back to Libya, some would soon be doing whatever they could to raise money for another attempt. All over the world today we know that the fastest paying job is prostitution. All over the world is prostitution. And that is the fastest means of how they make money to cross over to Europe. My message to the Europeans, Libya was peaceful before the revolution. It was after the revolution people decided to leave. And many have died. Through this, that many have died, my advice to my fellow Africans is, let us build Africa for our best and for our future. European governments and the Libyan authorities that concentrate first and foremost on deterrence and limiting migrant numbers may have different priorities from NGOs that have purely humanitarian aims. But all say they want to save lives, and so it is difficult to fully understand why they cannot work more effectively together. For as long as there is war and poverty in Africa and the Middle East to flee from, migrants will try to reach Europe from across the Mediterranean. If something goes wrong and their lives are at risk in dangerous seas, then surely someone should always be there to help them. But right now, all the participants in this complex narrative seem to be diverging rather than coming together. Si para seguir salvando vidas hay que desobedecer un código, también lo desobedeceremos porque nada está por encima de la vida humana, nada, absolutamente nada, ni una, ni una decisión política, ni un código, ni ninguna ley.